how do we make the transformation happen? So we make it happen by um, having a lot of different um, efforts to make it happen. We can, we, we can um, as advocates, go out and there are campaigns that bring awareness, like the Beyond Coal campaign or Keep It in the Ground campaign, because we do need to keep a lot of our fossil fuel reserves in the ground. We have a greenhouse gas budget and we can only put so much in the earth, in the sky. Um, and then we can also, uh, as entrepreneurs and business owners, we can um, invent and create the technology that can make it happen and continue to work on it. Just again, like we worked on our personal computers to make chips, chips smaller and faster and run better. Because as the technology, as we use the technology more, the prices will continue to come down more. So we continue to invest in it. And then we can pass laws. Uh, we have renewable portfolio standard laws. Those have been really great for getting them implemented because it tells the utility how much, um, how, many, how much renewables they need to use and have as part of their generating um, capacity. And, um, and then we can also, as consumers, uh, we can play a part too. We can buy um, um, fossil fuel free technology for our homes. So for heating, when our natural gas furnace gets old, we can buy a heat pump, which can produce heating and cooling. It, it, it's a refrigerator, it's like a refrigerator in reverse to heat, but your heat pump can act as a, as a ref uh, not refrigerator, sorry. I mean, it is a refrigerator too, but a, a uh, air conditioner. It can do air conditioning and it can do heating. And um, uh, for cooking also you can do electric cooking so you can get an induction oven and um, when you're natural gas, if you have natural gas cooking you can um, um, get electric cooking as well and that helps in the home to take it offline. Um, for a car when you find a model and a price you're ready for you get a, can get an electric car as well and that has a big impact as a consumer we um what we buy what we do tells our legislators what we want and manufacturers too because they listen to us you know by what we buy so so it's really collective teachers uh, business folks lawmakers consumers we can all we all have a part to play can moving to a 21st century all electric all renewable energy future and solving our climate problems happen from the bottom up? Right, it can happen from the bottom up in the sense that we, we can have an impact. And I explained what we can do, but um, if I give a few examples of what, when it's actually worked, when we've had an impact. Um, in California, if you think of us as from the bottom up, from what we want, rather than waiting for legislation from above to make it happen or, um, in California, folks put solar panels on their roof, and a lot of folks put it on. Now, it did. There were some net metering laws that were put into place, where um, uh, they could they were allowed to sell the electricity back, and it made it easier to sell um, or to put the solar panels on the roof. But what they did is they put solar panels on their their roof, and it told the utilities and the lawmakers that that's what they wanted. They wanted renewable energy in California. And one of the reasons it had so much impact was it impacted the utility. The utility felt the presence of those solar panels. And what it did is that um, it, it made it so that in the middle of the day, demand for electricity went down. So the utility's low went, load went way down. And that had huge disruption for the utility because all of a sudden they had to turn all of their generation off. So they had their coal plants and their natural gas plants and their nuclear plants. And those things don't just go on and off like that, right? I mean, it's a gradual thing. And before with um, central generation, y utility kind of knew what the load and the demand would be. It was fairly predictable through the day. And when you produce electricity, you have to, when you use it, you have to use it when it's produced. There's no electricity storage in general in the system. So the utility would know what the demand would be and they would, the operators would manage it. But now all of a sudden, the load went, the demand went way down. The sun would come out, folks would go to work, they, were, they weren't using that much electricity, and the operators went, oh my gosh, you know, what's going on? We have to turn this off. But then at night, uh, in the evening, 
folks would come home and the sun would go down. So they'd stop producing electricity with the solar panels. And all of a sudden, the demand and the load for the utility would just spike. It spiked. It was crazy. And the operators then were um, forced with turning all of their generation back on. But generation, generators don't turn on like that. It's a slow process. So when I've gone to conferences, uh, utility folks spend a lot of time talking about that uh, sequence of events, and it made them react. It made the utilities and the lawmakers say, wow, how do we deal with it? And one of the things that they did is laws were passed in California to procure or to imp for utilities to actually implement energy storage so that storage, storage is really good at, at turning on and off, bringing electricity on line and supplying, managing variable renewable energy. Storage is really good at that. Our natural gas plants and our coal plants, there are definitely our nuclear plants, are not meant for handling renewable energy. There's some talk that natural gas plants can do it, but they really can't do it as quickly and as efficiently as energy storage. So the, util so the um, commissioners got involved and they, they um, uh, allocated or um, they allocated money or allowed allocation of money to the utilities and lawmakers in the legislature passed laws saying that it was okay to do storage and it had an impact. And so California is one of the first places in the country that actually started implementing um, energy storage. So the point was that from the bottom up, just what we as a consumer bought, as consumers bought, had an impact. And another time, where the consumer had an impact was with electric vehicles. And um, what happened was in 26, 2016, um, model, the um, uh, Tesla had asked for pre-orders for Tesla Model 3s. And 400,000 people put $1,000 down sight unseen for Tesla Model 3 vehicles. And all of a sudden, the auto industry woke up. They just woke up because they said, oh my gosh, there's a demand for these vehicles. And before uh, the German companies were, some folks from the German companies were making fun of Tesla, like that's not really a good vehicle. No, it's never gonna happen. You know, and people didn't really believe it. And there was a lot of, there's still a skepticism. skepticism. There, was, there were articles every day coming out saying how Tesla would fail and there still are, but <laughs> you know, but still, there was a lot of skepticism in uh, electric vehicles, and uh, it has it transformed after that because the auto companies said, "Wow, there's actually a market for this," and the consumer made their voice heard in that way. It wasn't just calling your legislator and saying, "Please do this and please pass this law." We as consumers did something that really had a transformative uh, uh, impact.